What's up YouTube, Dairyland here with Novatech, and as some of you might know, I've been shooting a lot of weddings lately, and I have officially gone into the wedding business. I absolutely love it, it's a lot of fun to me, and I actually do it with my wife, she's actually my second shooter. So if you don't already know, my professional videography company is called Nova Media. I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Media, or you can go to my website, www.novamedia.com, I'll drop a link below, make sure you guys check that out. But today's review is a little bit special, I have a review of the Batis or Batiste 85mm f1.8, but specifically for wedding filmmakers and event videographers. So let's jump right in. So the box is a classic Zeiss Batis or again Batiste. I don't know if it's Batis or Batiste, but I'm just gonna say Batis. Looks super good. Open that up and let's take a look inside. But seriously though, this thing's gorgeous. So inside the box, you'll see that they wrap it up in some plastic, keep it nice. So inside we get a classic lens hood. We got our beautiful 85 millimeter F1.8 Zeiss baddest lens. Dang, that thing looks clean. So this guy has the weather seal ring, super nice, love having that. Very smooth, super buttery focus ring. I love that. A lot of people don't like this rubber focus ring, but I actually kind of like it. I prefer this over those metal grooved ones. So personal opinion. And right here we have the OLED display. So this will tell you your focusing distance from things. You can change it from feet to meters, blah, blah, blah. In general, you can have it on, off, whatever you want. You can set it for yourself. Super easy. All you do is turn it a bunch of times one way or turn it a bunch of times the other way. It's pretty self-explanatory. So this guy has a 67 millimeter filter thread, not sponsored at all, but for my UV filters, I like Zeiss because I'm using Zeiss glass, why not use some Zeiss filters? They're a little bit on the expensive side. They're about 100 to 150 bucks per, but somebody explained it to me this way. If you're gonna spend this much money on a lens and want some good image quality, why cover it up with some crappy glass that'll just muddy your image? So might as well go big and get the good stuff. And as for ND filters, I absolutely swear by this company and I love variable ND filters just because you have the option of changing the intensity of the ND without having to switch ND filters, so that's super nice. ProMaster, about 120, 150 bucks as well, so about the same price, but these are actually super nice. So inside you'll see, nice little ND filter right here and I can spin the ring and it'll get darker and lighter and darker. But the best part is, it doesn't keep spinning. I like that it has a hard stop, so you know where the ending is. And that's my favorite part about these filters. Definitely check these out. These are super good quality. I love these ones. The Zeiss has a way better carrying case. Super nice, super protective. Very clear, very beautiful glass. No distortion. Literally, on both of these, I've seen no distortion, which is one of the best things about them. Enough about that. These are my ND and UV filters that I use. If you want to check these out, I'll drop a link below for you guys. Back to the lens though, 67 millimeter filter thread, like I said, and the minimum focusing distance isn't that great, but this is an 85 millimeter though, so you'll most likely have plenty of room between you and your subject. So this guy's minimum focusing distance is about two and a half feet, so not the greatest. But let's put this box aside and talk a little bit more about this lens. So to all you out there watching this video, this is my personal review and my personal opinion, specifically, like I said, for wedding filmmakers and event videographers, so if that isn't you feel free to jump to another video but if you want to stick around let's get right into this so I didn't think I would use this as much as I did but I shot two weddings in the past couple weeks and I had this on my camera at the wedding for about 80% of the day it was just extremely versatile I shoot on a Sony a7r2 so the best thing is that I'm able to crop in one and a half times and really not lose image quality which is amazing so it's awesome that I can go from 85 millimeter all the way up to about 127 128 millimeters and that is perfect for weddings. When I use 70 to 200s, I don't really like going all the way up to 200. I max out around 150 usually, so look how small this guy is. Compare this to any 70 to 200 out there, it's probably gonna be about twice the length of this and probably a lot heavier as well. So this guy actually has a decent amount of weight to it, but not in a bad way. It feels like a really quality piece of glass, metal construction, rubber ring, like I said. You've got weather sealing right here, which is great for wedding and event videographers because quite often you're gonna be outdoors, so it's good to have that. And throwing the lens hood on, you guys can see it really doesn't extend it that much. I usually like shooting with the lens hood on unless I have the ND filter on because fair warning, if you put this specific ND filter on, you won't be able to put this lens hood on anymore. So very nice lens hood, plastic, but built well. Look at this little guy. You can just throw this in your bag and be able to have such a far reach instead of carrying those giant 70 to 200s. I know you guys are dying to see some footage, so why don't I go ahead and roll some footage from these weddings that I shot in the past couple weeks.
So hopefully you guys like what you saw. I absolutely loved what I shot. Let's go ahead and tell you a few reasons why I love this lens, and I'll just give you some cons as well that I would love to see improved on this lens. So first off, image quality is phenomenal. I love how fast and sharp that f1.8 is. A lot of people don't like shooting wide open because they don't feel it's as sharp, but on this lens, guys, I think it looks clean as heck. I will say too, I have tried out the 85 millimeter G Master, and personally, I like this one a lot more. It's a little bit smaller, the focusing is silent on this guy, whereas on that lens, you can still hear the focusing motors, and in general, the image quality between the two is pretty similar, and this guy's a little cheaper. So this guy retails around 1200 bucks, Sometimes you can find it for a little bit cheaper, so definitely look around. Another thing I like, the OLED screen. I don't use it that much, but to be honest, since I'm a tech YouTuber, I think it's pretty dang awesome, and sometimes it actually comes in a little handy. Another thing is the focus ring is incredibly smooth. It's butter smooth and it's great to use. Love that. I definitely like that this guy is nice and compact. I personally have the 24 to 70 G Master as well, and that guy is a hunk of a piece of glass, and that thing is heavy. But this guy's nice and small, I get tons of range, and I'd choose this any day over a 70 to 200. It's got a great lens hood. Personally, I have no idea why, I just prefer this kind of lens hood shape over the tulip styled shaped lens hoods, and I know that they're tulip styled for wide angle lenses for a reason, but I'm just saying. I like these lens hoods, guys. So you've heard some good things that I like about this, but what are some things that I think they can maybe improve on, or maybe that I don't like so much? I'll tell you this. 1200 bucks is a lot of money, but to be honest, if you want great glass, you're gonna have to pay the price. So 1200 bucks, expensive, expensive, I know. Next up, it is a bit heavy. Part of the reason why I love the Sony cameras and the mirrorless system is because it's supposed to be small, compact, lightweight. So this lens itself with the lens hood is about a pound. Another con, very minor because you can actually just turn it off and it won't do anything, but it does have an OLED screen, which means it is drawing some battery, some power from my camera, which already has terrible battery life. One more thing, you're paying 1200 bucks for this and there's no carrying case. Not even those cheap carrying cases with the fake leather and the drawstring bag that Sony usually gives. No carrying case at all, so that's a pretty big bummer too. But to be honest, that's about the end of my complaint. As you can see from the footage you saw, things I said, I think this is an amazing lens. And part of the reason why I think every wedding filmmaker and event videographer should have this in their bag is because for professional lenses, the price really isn't that bad. For professional use, the weight isn't that bad. And again, for professional use, the size is amazing and the range that you can get on this from 85 all the way up to about 128 millimeters, that's perfect for getting those nice, tight, close-up shots. And for all you photographers out there, 85 millimeters, we all know, is great for portrait shots. So I definitely think you should add this to your lens arsenal. I definitely did. It took a lot to bite the bullet and actually get this guy, but I think it's super worth it. So I personally had the idea to use this as my long-range lens for a while now. I've just been saving up for it, but I give credit where credit is due. And my friend Craig Adams from Wedding Film School also talked about this guy as a great option for wedding filmmakers, so definitely check his channel out, guys. Craig, love your content, keep it up, man. These were my own opinions. I'd love to hear yours, whether you like this lens or not. Drop a comment below, let me know your thoughts about it, and let me know if you guys have this lens, or if you're thinking about picking it up. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. My name is Jerry Land with Nobatech, and to the next one, and beyond.